Hello and welcome back or welcome to season two of Hardcore Minecraft with me, Do Mountain. And we are standing over here in our brand new lovely dungeon that we've got to, you know, fill out and support our witch farm. Because we discussed last episode our goals for this year and our goals for this hardcore world, what we want to try and get through, and we, we kind of worked out that. I want to do a lot more building and I want to do a lot more storytelling. So we thought we'll start off over here with our witch farm and start building up an old castle that is haunted by the lost spirits that we have taken from these witches. And as you can hear them laughing in the background over there, we have managed to build up somewhat of a really nice dungeon area filled with dripping water, sound and ambience to really give you the the gloomy feel that these witches will be going through. Now last time all we got enough time to do was build the uh, side of the dungeon and because we sp spoke about doing a bit more of a different build style so I started working on the interior before doing any exterior work so we don't actually have the, the shell of a castle we just have the interior maze of the dungeon and well I've continued on with that theme so in between episodes it was a bit too hot to do some recording so I just started coming and laying out floor plans. So this is where I want ground level to be. As you can see, we've got some stairs over there leading to another ground level of a different building. And we've got the same over here. Continuing on with the yellow wool to help sort of mark out our framing walls of the buildings. And this time I've come and started to use the oak and the stripped oak logs to just make the flooring because, well, I wanted to use the materials that was around here. And as you can see, a lot of oak, a lot of dark oak and there's a lot of mushroom blocks too so we got a fair bit of a, 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 a variety in our palette that allows us to make you know almost anything kind of work so I, I thought if I chose a nice simple floor we can really get some detailing done in our walls and that but this is going to lead up right here to the uh, to the key concept of today's episode you see this is hardcore Minecraft and we want to start telling stories and have a long lasting life in here. So we need to try and work out, can we cheat death in ultra, in ultra, in hardcore Minecraft? I'm thinking of a different series there. But the question still remains, can we do it? And I strongly believe that with the power of this witch farm, we will be able to make ourselves, well, we kind of have, I jumped ahead a little bit, and made automatic potion brewers because I do believe that having access to these potions will help us pro prolong our life obviously there is a there's an obvious answer to this question but please don't jump ahead <laughs> but I believed if we could make up some potions this is going to really make it all pop and we're just going to be able to have it you know as we want this here is a tileable uh, automatic brewing uh, thingy Yes, I'm good with words. Designed by uh, Silent Whisper. So I will leave a link in the description. But it's pretty simple. So we've just got our brewing stations here. We've got a box which will have all of our uh, water bottles in it to be able to go down. And then we just stack up the items that we want in our order. So it will go nether wart. And then let's say, for example, one of them that I want is strength plus. So that would be nether wart in there, followed by some blaze powder in the second one. And that final one up the top there, we can add some redstone dust. Now, for this design, we don't need the fourth one, but it's just, you know, depending on what uh, potion you're brewing, you might need to go a little bit higher. So I did just leave the room so that way we could uh, design what we wanted and then actually put them into place and take away the excess. So as we can see here I have six of these automatic brewers because I believe there's six potions that we really need to help us out in this world. Now this first one you can see there's some bottles in there because well I want to have healing two potions because well we get all of these healing potions from the witch may as well take advantage of it add a bit of glowstone in this top one uh, glowstone dust that is and this system works, except we don't have the key ingredient of blaze powder in there yet. But this one here is a nice simple one and it's only two tall, uh, one tall because all of our potions are in their premix. This is just adding the bonus effect, so we'll be able to get rid of these two. The other ones though, we do have to start from scratch because I'm wanting to add in, as I said at the start there, strength plus to sort of give us a bit longer lasting on it. I want to give us regen because, well, 
obviously having regeneration is going to be excellent but we do need to fight some gas for those so i'm not 100 percent sure how well that's going to go fire resistance like obviously we're going to be doing some more work in the nether or just with lava having anything that's going to help us not burn to death is a must have then the opposite of that is water breathing because I, I don't want to drown but we've got some guardian temples which I'd really like to go and start working on. So potion of water breathing, must have that. And then the last one I'm thinking more along the lines of first when we're building up higher or for that inevitable day when we go and take on the dragon. Potions of slow falling. These are our six potions that I want to fill up over here and I think these are going to be one of the one of the key three things that we're going to need to be able to cheat death in this hardcore Minecraft world. But it's starting to get a little bit darker here, so let me jump back into the safety of our dungeon, which, as you can see, is still a maze. Looks good though on the inside. But let me go jump safely in there, have a bit of a nap, and then we can discuss a little bit further on what we're gonna do today. So, in order to get our potion brewing system up and running, there's quite a few items that we still need to collect. One of them, big ones that we kind of already have a hand on, is netherwort. As you can see from last episode, I've got a small little patch just underneath our storage area there over at the top part of this dungeon. And, I mean, it's not... It's not the best, but it has kept us with uh, quite enough stock that you can see I've been keeping in here. So, we're alright with this for now. We do need to get ourselves some more soul sand so that way we can build up a bigger farm. So, that's a trip to the nether. That's one item. The next item, which is one of the most important things to be able to do potion brewing, is blaze powder. We need something to fuel our power, to be able to get our brewing stations all up and running. So that, that, that means another trip to the nether where we're going to need um, where we're going to need to make a blaze farm. Luckily though, we do know where a fortress is. I've just got to go search it for a blaze spawner and hope it actually has one. Another item that we're going to need is uh, well for fire resistance. It's either magma cream or we take advantage of having a blaze farm and use the blaze rods or the blaze powder with slime balls which you saw last time, I, I found one of those, so we've got a slime farm going. That way we can cheese it and not have to worry about the pain in the ass magma cubes. Next thing that we need, potion of breathe, water breathing. I've got heaps of uh, puffer fish from early days of fishing, so that's not an issue. Slow falling. I've actually now got to start staying up during the night and killing phantoms. That's not much of a problem, that's just I don't didn't want to do it, but now we've got to do it. The final one that I think is going to be the biggest and the hardest issue is to make regen we need gas tears and guys if, if you are new here hi i'm doom mountain by the way but i am terrible absolutely terrible with a bow and our only way really to get these because i don't have enough space or the resources to make a gas farm i would love to but uh i don't think that's happening anytime soon so i'm gonna actually have to go out hunting for these gas and I think that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but um, if we look over through our notes, that's um, we got to go to the nether, and I'm not looking forward to it. So I think what's going to happen here is we'll go to the nether together. I'm going to make a run home first because I do have one potion of fire resist, so I will take that because uh, that, that'll just give us that safer edge, and I want that. But we're going to go to the nether. I have another design by Silent Whisper for making a uh, blaze farm, so if we manage to find a blaze spawner, then I'll probably kick into a building montage because I'm going to have to watch that video and build and you guys don't want to hear him coming through my mic and me stumbling through working out how to do it. So that, that's, that's a plan at the moment is, if you can't tell I'm a bit nervous because we've got to go to the nether and I don't want to die in there. It, the, the reason why it's a bit of a big thing for me is because that's how we lost our first hardcore world was in the nether. So, yeah. On a brighter note though, we did make a new friend while I was uh, building up some of this stuff up the top there. And that is, we found a naturally generated pink sheep. Which, of course, you know, it's... it's we, we shouldn't be getting these in the wild, they're so rare, so... Obviously... Yeah, you're someone in disguise trying to steal our plans. So until we know what's going on here, the pink sheep is in this jail cell. 
So please, guys, if somebody could, uh, you know, leave us a name. Maybe even leave a bit of a backstory because we are trying to make more lore and that in here. So if you guys have a name or some backstory for this sheet, please leave it in the comments. I reckon this is going to be great fun. But uh, enough putting it off. I'm going to make my way back home to the Cherrywood Isles, get my potion of fire resist, and I'll meet you in the nether. So see you over there. All right, guys, we are now here in our very boring and ugly looking nether tunnel system which I really need to work on as you can see that's the uh, portal to the Cherrywood Isles and we head on down here and go through a long set of mazes and find ourselves at the witch farm unfortunately there's a lot of stuff happening on the outside of this that I don't really want to enter into so our journey is going to take us all the way down this pathway and hopefully we should just arrive at our fortress that we've seen. So I don't think anything too scary is going to come along on this path. I'm pretty sure it's just a nice even row. So hopefully I'll just see you guys at the fortress. We've made it. See now if we can just find ourselves. Oh, there's a blaze. Oh my god, I am so scared of the nether. Oh, see, like I was about to swing then. That would have hit one of the piglins. And that could have been it for me. Wait, can I convince him to have hit one? Okay, um, I'm not doing badly at this, they are. Better safe proof all of this, because I do not want any of those guys in here. i just seen the pigs up there, I can't, I won't be able to survive if they come in. I have to close that off. Oh, Mountain, you're terrified of everything. Yes, I am. Yes, I am! See, it's a little baby one, but they still... I hate this biome. I hate this area. I hear them out there. Dude, let's go get slabs. I'm gonna slab the floor so nothing can spawn. Yep, I'm doing it the coward way. We shall be right back once I've got some slabs to uh, make this easy, because... Oh my god, I'm terrified. Yeah, some of you guys might be thinking, Mountain, you're a little bit of a chicken there. I don't want to die on the episode that we're trying to see if we can cheat death in hardcore. That wouldn't look good, so uh, I am playing it quite safe, I'm not going to lie. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I got myself some cobbled deep slate half slabs and hopefully I can just block out any mobs spawning in the area and we don't have to worry about them because I hate this place. I really do. Just go away. Ah! Me, I know what you're thinking, drink the fire resist, but it's only for three minutes, so I kind of really want to save. Come up close again. There we go, perfect. I know what you're thinking. Surely this is taking you quite some more time than it's worth. Yep, but um, scared. Oh, God. Alright, so as you can see, I managed to very slowly and steadily make my way to a 
uh, spawner. I think this might be the only one that's around here. And we have a very simple kind of blaze farm. I mean, they're coming down here and we can kill them off, but this isn't, this isn't the Silent Whisper design I was talking about. I thought, while we're here, and I've got it to this point here, we've got a few coming down, I'm going to collect up a few blaze rods so that we can now actually start making some of the basic potions to come down and build up this whole farm, because no joke, a blaze farm is probably the heart and soul of a any good potion set up at all so we need to get this farm going today i want to collect up a few more get ourselves some more uh potions especially fire resist that's going to last for eight minutes and um yeah i think that that's going to be the way to go for this so i'm going to quickly kill off a few of these brew up some more well, not some more but brew up some actual proper fire resist potions and build up this farm so um as I said at the start, this is a Silent Whispers design that I'm going to be building up here, so I'm not going to be able to explain it as well as he can. I'll just direct you guys to that video, and we'll be back with a with a blaze farm. I'm not going to... There's nothing bad that's going to happen. I'm going to have a positive mindset, and we'll be back with a brand new blaze farm. All right, so I thought just before I actually cut away and make up the blaze farm and bring us back in over there, I thought this would be a great opportunity to actually show you this automatic brewing brewing system in function like we've now got what we need to do to make our fire resist potions and as you can see there's nothing in this barrel here but if we go up our scaffolding you'll see that this chest holds all our water bottles which will be going into the brewing stun then we go up to where it all happens up here so this is important it's got to be the exact order in which the items need to go into the brewer for it to work so we start off with our nether wart which i was able to have a full stack of nine in there so that was great then that makes us an orchid potion once it goes through then we add in because i used some of the blaze powder with our slime balls to get magma cream we have that in there now that makes it a fire resist potion of three minutes is what we had before and now we go up to our final chest here which has all of our redstone dust which will extend it to eight minutes this last one up here is one of those just extra ones which i'll probably remove to save up some space and resources but yeah this is how everything stores into the system now if we push this button those three just water bottles should be dropped down into the barrel and the whole thing will start up so let's test that down they go okay three are in we've got our water bottles here we should see um okay what's going on here this <laughs> This isn't how it was supposed to work, guys. It was supposed to just drop them in and all that was gonna get shot off. Ah! <laughs> you see this redstone torch? I'm missing one. Right at the back of this thing here. One moment. Okay, I just add this to each one of them. They're all gonna go off. Um, so, oh, and one there. <laughs> ah! Oh! Well, Feather Falling 4. Thank you. Jeez, that was a, that was a bit of a drop. <laughs> oh, I uncrouched what I shouldn't have. Oh, okay. So, another key thing on how to cheat death, obviously, is uh, have good enchants on your armor. Feather Falling 4 for the win. Now, let's see if I can fix up that mistake. Jeez. Um, oh, I'm not going to be able to pick that up again, am I? You'll get one fixed later. It's it's ironic. This is the, the healing 2, and it almost just killed me. Oh, wait. We heard some potion being done. Okay, this is fire resist eight. What do we got in here? We got eight, two. Jeez, I'm all frazzled. Okay, let's top this back up with the potions that we should be seeing. Oh, there's one here. Okay, so as we can see, we have our potions already sitting in there so that every time we come up and push a button, 
those three get dispensed in here. Fire resist eight. We get the uh, two, well, I don't know why, eight minutes is why. We get the nether wart dropped off and all of our items are dropped in order. And our potions are made just, just like that, nice and automatically for us. We could even, if we wished, set up some sort of system to just, you know, activate this say each morning so that way there's always a fresh batch being brewed up but yeah so I now just really frazzled after falling off of this building um yeah I think now it's time that I go and build a blaze rod farm so yeah I'll see you over there once I get that done so I've just stopped in here at the fish market at the Cherrywood Isles because well I came across the fact that my awesome diamond sword that I thought was all great and mighty and he has looting two so uh, I kind of need to up that a little bit to looting three so I came back here where we've got all our books and that from fishing found one up with looting two and I was just blown away with how expensive it was to add look at that all I'm doing is putting it up to looting three and it's gonna cost us 33 levels I mean I'm gonna get it done but like that was ridiculous. We were just over a hundred before, and now we're back down to sixty. <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought I'd just share that bit of information with you guys. So let's now head on over to the finished Belize farm. All right. So it took me probably about an hour and a half because I was playing this very safely. But we do have quite an ugly-looking build. However, though, it is a Blaze farm. Now. I have gone for the more manual version of this farm because I'm not saying AFKing in the nether. The, the nether, if it isn't been made clear enough yet, is the worst biome for me. It's the worst place. I hate it. So I just go to do it manually so I don't stay here AFKed. And uh, yeah, but um, as you can see, uh, it's got the spawner in there. It's marked out the areas where things can move. Lava now can apparently push mobs around. So they're all just getting channeled all the way down here. This one just goes up the top in case I need to check anything. It's nothing really important there. But if we go on down here, you can see that we've got our blaze dropping in and items are being collected up down here. Now, I did only just manage to update my sword and I cannot believe how many levels that costs. But um, it should up our productivity coming out of this farm. So, I think guys, I'm going to spend a little bit of time here so that we've got enough blaze rods to last us for quite some time so I don't really have to come back here again. And I'll meet you back over at our brewing area so we can try and get up almost all of our potions at somewhat of a ready stage. So I'll catch you over there. Well, you hate to see it, but I've just had a case of audio corruption. Like, there was nothing wrong with the footage. It's not even that too much of a hot day, but uh, it just wanted my voice to go clock, 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 clock. So, um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we we missed the part where I went through and we did our first big brew up together. But now you can see that we have all of these potions. We've got enough blaze powder and blaze rods to survive us for a whole time. That We've now got all of our potions in. I did say, though, that I only had two phantom membranes that I could find and I have have stock in here we've used them both up but um I don't have any gas tears and I feel like I've spent enough time in another this episode that oh, I, I don't want to go hunting for them it's scary in there <laughs> but as you can see we've got all of our potions I've taken one of each to be able to put in our ender chest and so we've got our strength we've got water breathing and of course we've got our fire resist now this one here is now out, but I can show you guys with the others that once we push in, our potions get sucked out into our chest or barrel, so we've got more, and they all get put back in there to be able to, you know, be refilled and refurbished. So all these three, our fire, our resist, our water, breathing, and our strength, I have plenty of, they're all full to the brim. Um, our uh, regen, I need to go face some gas, I told you, I'm scared of that. And well, we've got to stay up a few nights to be able to get more phantom membranes or have our cat friends bring them back to us if we let them sleep with us at night. So there's two options we can get for those. But um, yeah, so as you can see now, our automatic brewing setup is complete. I am sorry that we're now recording this part at night because my audio didn't want to sync up or whatever it was. But um, yeah, so let's now, let's now go down into the basement. 
So now that we have our automatic brewing system in place, we've gotten ourselves a whole heap of blaze rods so that way we won't run out. Our nether wart collection is not quite the best, but it is in action and we still have plenty in reserve. I think we, we have managed to check off stage two of how to cheat death, because I believe at the start I said that there are three key elements. The first one is one that I always sort of seem to show, which is playing a little bit safe, you know, think it through. Am I actually going to survive this or should I just run that fight or flight? Listening to that little voice, you know, that, that, that that's step one. Step two is our gear and our potions. And as we saw earlier in the episode, Feather Falling 4 was a great example. Now that we have all of these potions, we are pretty well shaped to be able to have, you know, our strength boosting. Boosting? Boosted. Our ability to fall, you know, taken off the harshness a little bit. We've got some more health coming in, as well as all these other goodies. So, we have now completed the first two stages on how to cheat death in Hardcore Minecraft. I think now it's important to talk about, well, the third one, which is the ultimate key in cheating death in Hardcore Minecraft, and that is a Totem of Undying. Now, Totems of Undying can be held by um, Vindicators, I think. Uh, is it Vindicator or Vex? It's one of them. But either way, they, they hold the Totems of Undying. And, well, the key of this item is if you were to perish, it will perish for you. So, yeah, what are, what's a, it's a big key thing in how to cheat death in hardcore Minecraft. And I, I, I think... I think it might be time that we try and acquire one of these. Now, in our first season of Hardcore Minecraft, there was a bug and I couldn't activate raids. So we went and, uh, yeah, we went and got a woodland mansion and raided that, not so successfully, but successfully enough that we got two totems and was able to have them. This time round though, I still have no clue. I'm, I'm just going in there thinking, you know, that bug is no longer a bug. And we're gonna try a raid. That's how we're going to end this is we've got to get that last key to cheating death so we need a totem of dying. Whew. So let's get working on that.
Alright, so I'd like to start off with a bit of an apology to anyone that kind of heard the words, you know, raid to get some totems and thought, oh sweet, we're going to get to see Mountain go a few rounds with some ravages, that sort of stuff. Well, not, not really, because that would kind of go against the first rule of try and cheat death, and that's, you know, the fight or flight method and think it through so that you don't have such a bad outcome for yourself. So I've you know, watched a few different videos on how to make a few different types of raid farms and well I've kind of put a few different pieces that I like together and built up my own. So this is a Do Mountain original. Um, it's got just a basic villager there for him to be able to actually start a raid. We've got a platform above me up there for our raid to spawn in which is then taking him through into a trident killer to kill him off and send all our goodies down below just down there so i i think you know this is going to work i have not yet tried this i have tried this in a creative test world and it worked perfectly now you're probably thinking how do we get the bad omen to start a raid well that villager outpost my render distance just isn't quite big enough but it's over there so we're just going to go over there kill a, a raid captain and then come back here and by the time we start climbing up this scaffolding a raid should start and we should be back up here in time to turn on this lever and get the trident killer to work and it should all work yeah I'm 100% I'm certain it's going to work you see that behind me there too in the distance yeah ocean monument didn't know that was there so that could be in an upcoming future episode all right stop stalling mountain let's let's go kill a raid captain <sighs> let's see if this raid farm works so Let's get it started. All right, mission's simple. Head over here, kill a raid captain, and then test it out in this big box thing that you've made and hope that it all works and you don't die. It's gonna be simple, see? There's a silhouette of it, it's coming to view now. We just go up there, find ourselves a raid captain, don't start a raid in that village, and make our way all the way back. It's gonna be safe, we're gonna be fine. Nothing bad can happen. Ah. Ooh, a goat horn! I haven't been up here! Ah! <laughs> How fitting! Okay. Jeez, I didn't know. I didn't realize I hadn't been up here. Alright. Um, oh, it's getting dark and I don't have a bed on me. Hey, so um, I think, you know, this might be a cut where we come in here where this is one of those undersites that I didn't think would be an issue of actually waiting for one of these guys to spawn in as a raid captain. Um, it's taking longer than I thought. It's, it's taking longer than I thought. And a captain. Yes! <laughs> we can finally test my farm. Okay, we have bad omen. Beautiful. This is it, guys. Once I get in that boat and we make it halfway up that scaffolding, there's no turning back. This raid will start and it's all stations go. All right, as we're approaching it, I'm a little bit nervous. I hope the audio, we don't have any more of those problems. Um, I'm hoping that I've placed everything correctly. Whew. This is it. All right, let's get up there. I'm sorry if the shield is in the way. I'd want it there just in case any issues happen. One thing that I didn't touch on about why I wanted it built <clears throat> over the ocean was in case something bad happens, I can just jump out into the water and get away. Okay. Try and kill us on. This is this is the moment, guys. Now, one good thing about this raid farm compared to a few others that I've seen is because they usually have the tower underneath so you get bad omen automatically. This way, you can control it. You get to choose. Um, you know, if you want to keep going, we'll just make a trip back there. and I'm sure I'll get it all s more simplified. Sorry if I'm moving around a lot and talking a lot. I'm, I'm quite nervous. Um, if that's not obvious, I don't know if... The trident killer's too loud. Um, I'm too afraid to pause the game and change any of those settings now. I'm just... Okay, is that first ravager? 
Does that make it two right lava? Oh, jeez. There's one left. Now, in my testing, I will admit, I only ever had issues with Ravengers and Witches. Witches, because they can keep healing themselves. Ravengers, yep, which is this guy. They get stuck up there and push against the flow of the water. So, I am aware of it. However, though, they do always tend to, you know, kill themselves. Oh, God. Uh, there we go. Good. Sometimes I try and just bait them, I see if I can detect where I am by jumping up. There we go. There we go. Yes! Alright, I can't remember what uh, round this is now, but... Alright. Come on. Alright, I'm going to try and get this one. Which is trying to heal. Yes. One's a witch, I just saw a little bit of health going back up there. There's our items going into the system. Yes! Okay. Come on. So I am I do apologize for the camera moving around a lot. It's I've just gotta make sure that nothing spawns where it shouldn't. I don't miss see a Vex being spawned and have it try and sneak up on me. I think there's another Ravager up there. Definitely something in here. Yeah, we've got a Ravager and something in the Triangle. Yes! It's just a Ravager left. Okay, good. I can, I can stare real freely while I'm at that because he's not going to send any Vexes out to get me. Come on. Come down here. Try and pass right towards him. Okay, please let this be the last round. I'm getting a bit, whew, a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm sorry if I peaked the mic then. We may have cheesed this hero of the village, but we are the hero of the village. Let's turn that off. Let's uh, let's quickly go to bed. Just jump down. Ah. Quickly sleep. And now we should see totems of undying. Yes, look at them. <laughs> we have three. Oh, we have five! Yes! Ooh, the items have kept going. Any chance a few more? Oh. Okay, let's get this shield off. Look at that! We did it! We did it! We have totems of undying in our hardcore world. I never thought that I would set up a raid farm successfully in hardcore Minecraft. Look, there we go! Okay, yes, a few notes. We need to improve how we get Bad Omen, but... Oh, guys, we did it! Yes! Oh, that, that's... Oh, that's too good. Okay, look, I, I tell you what, I'm going to grab the emeralds from here as well, and I'm going to meet you back at the cher Cherrywood Isles. I whew, just need a breather after that. That was... Yes, I am so happy with... Yes! <laughs>
Alright, I'm back here now with Bluey after completing our raid and collecting ourselves up some lovely Totems of Undying, which has been the final key in cheating death. That's right, Bluey, I believe that we are now going to be able to live a very, very long time. Like, look, we have a total of five uh, totems of undying. Let's look at all these potions we got now. We've got fire resist, we've got water breathing, strength, slow falling, healing, and regen soon to come. Well, honestly, I think today has been an incredible day. I've, I've really, really just happy with what we've achieved. Now, I'm not too sure how much of the raid farm I've had to sort of snip out a little bit just because I haven't quite been able to get that part of the editing done yet so if I've taken out a, a, a bit more than I'd like to just to keep the video in a nice time frame I'll probably upload another smaller little video that includes the whole thing there so you guys can see my full panic throughout the whole thing and my full upset when it wasn't working the way I wanted it to but guys like, oh, I think we have truly, truly done it today. We have worked out the secrets to cheating death in hardcore Minecraft. I'm, I'm feeling so, so much more confident now with our um, Tomes Undying that I might be able to start walking around now a bit more without my helmet on so you guys can see my lovely face because, I mean, Bunny Edits did put uh, quite a lot of time and care in making this lovely skin for me. But I think now we've got this Tome of Undying, I might be able to show it off a little bit more. But thank you everyone who has tuned in this episode, watched up to this point. I'm so grateful for you all. This channel has received a lot of love lately. And hey, if you guys are new here and you made it all the way up to the video, maybe you might want to leave a like and maybe even subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. But um, yeah, I think with all of this done, all our exploration in the nether, getting the raid farm set up, the brewing farm, like the automatic brewers, I, I think it's time that Bluey and I take a little bit of a rest. So thank you to everyone who has tuned in. And until next time, 